had a nice, good, nice, happy mood in the house today, and I'm about to ruin it. That's what I do for a living. Amen. Now, not really, but I want to go to the book of Revelation. There was seven churches that Jesus spoke to John, the beloved. This is res- the resurrected Christ, and we'll see a little bit of what he looks like today in the message. The resurrected Christ. Might look a little different than you think. And he had uh, messages for seven real churches. But these messages were also uh, prophetic. Things that will be in the future. Well, we are in the future now. You know that, right? And uh, are these the last days? I don't know. But I tell you what, in my lifetime, they feel like it. In the lifetime that I've lived on this earth and things that I've seen, it feels that way. But regardless... No man knows the day nor the hour when the Lord will come. But are we in the last days? I don't know. But I know that what he says about these churches, I don't know at all, that's for sure. But I'm going to just glean a little bit with you from today. It's not going to bore you to tears, I hope. Y'all hear me or not say? Okay, But you got to participate. Go, I ain't going to be bored to tears right now. All right. So you come on in here and help me. Let's go rise with the message today. Here we go. Last day's church. When I travel to North Carolina, there's a church that looks a lot like that in Florida. It's on Highway 301. If you go north and you cut off above Ocala and take that right through, about 15 miles when you take that right, you'll want to stop at Diane's Barbecue. That's what you're going to want to do. Right there. And it cuts off a lot of interstate for you, but if you keep on going, a couple of little towns, there's a church that looks like that. It looks like that church. And it's got all kinds of uh, design on it. It's crazy. But uh, interesting, Raj. The last day's church. The church is from the book of Revelation. Let's roll, buddy. Here we go. I'm waiting on you now. Look at that. Now, I believe these are actual ruins. He's been doing this series for us. And he goes and actually finds the actual ruins of these real churches that really existed. A lot of people, you don't believe the Bible, do you? These were real churches that really existed. And there's even uh, antiquity. And, and sometimes unbelieving antiquity that, and, and people that will back this up, that this was a real church, okay? So the Bible really is true, and you can trust the Lord. Amen? So let's go with it. The compromised church. Say that out loud. The what? We've looked at the judging church. We've looked at the loving church. Last week we looked at the suffering church. And we've looked at several now. We've looked at the fallen church. Today... The compromised church. The compromised church. It's the church at Pergamos. Perga what? Pergamos. Okay? Let's just learn a little bit, Rod. You push me, buddy. Come on. Here we go. Pergamos. Little history. This is where it's located. The seven churches were located in Turkey, modern-day Turkey. It would have then been Asia. It would have been under Roman rule. It would have been the province of Asia. Not like you and I know it today where it's broken up into different countries. But regardless, Rome ruled it all. But Pergamos, you can see it. So far we've studied several of these churches. You can see them. We're Xing them off right there. And today we're going to look at Pergamos. Pergamos, that's where we're at. Okay? Roll it, Rod. Let's see what we can find. Y'all didn't know I was like a teacher, did you? This is impressive, isn't it? And I'm sure you're going, wow, I'm impressed. You know, normally when I, when I preach, I never wear a white shirt because it makes me look like a snowman. You're, you're nodding your head. Don't you think I look like a snowman? Shut your mouth. So pop those glasses off his head. Just slap him right, like right now. But anyway, I've gained weight especially. But you know what? I put this on last night. Then I stuck it on this one. I thought, you know what? This is reality. There's just no covering this up anymore. But anyway, back to the message. Here we go. Here we go. Pergamos. Pergamos. It was the capital city of what? Asia. Yeah. So a pretty big place. It boasted a library. Now that needs to say 200,000, Roger. It boasted a library of over 200,000 volumes. So you might say, well, that's not a lot. It was a lot back then. Okay. And you might know this. I don't know. Keep going. It was given to Cleopatra. This library was given to Cleopatra by Mark Anthony. This is a real place. Things really happened there. And this is a church that Jesus is actually addressing. It's pretty interesting, I think. 
It was the first city where parchment paper was used. Okay? Big deal on, on, you know, library and books. And this is where a lot of it all started right here at this place called Pergamos. That's enough about that. What about the early church? What about the early church that was there? Let's, let's see what we can learn from the Bible. Y'all with me now? Y'all listening or not? You with me? All right, stay with me. And to the angel of the church, say it with me, in where? Pergamos, right. These things says he, this is Jesus, which has, say it with me, the sharp sword with two edges. So that's how he dresses. If somebody says, hello, my name is whoever, and here's my sword, you're probably going to go, all righty then. It sort of gives us that, that, that introduction. It's an unusual introduction, isn't it? Hi, my name's Gary, and here's my big pistol. You know, it just, or here, you know, my name is Gary, and here's my shotgun. It just has a way of backing you up a little bit. Is that correct? So just keep that in mind. Back in Revelation chapter 1, I want you to see this. Who is speaking? Well, Jesus is to John, and John's writing this letter to the church. But here's how Jesus appears in Revelation chapter 1. Jesus' head and hair were white like wool. A little different view that you might have than the artist paints of Jesus today. This is the resurrected glorified Christ. As white as snow, his eyes were as a flame of fire. A little different picture of Jesus, isn't it? You need to realize no matter what problem you got, he's at the right hand of God the Father making intercession for you. When you picture Jesus a little like this, maybe you realize you are more than a conqueror when you know him. Does that make any sense? His feet are like fine brass They've been, that, that's been burned in a furnace. His voice sounds like the voice of many waters. You have a powerful Savior in Jesus. And in His right hand, seven stars. Here's what I want us to see too. Say it with me. And out of His what? Mouth. Here we go. When a what? Sharp, two-edged, Sword. So he addresses Pergamos with this sword thing. He makes emphasis on that. And then his countenance, say that with me, was as the what? Sun that shines in his strength. What does it look like to look into the face of Jesus? According to the book of Revelation, it would be like going out in Florida between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. and staring in the sun. You need to realize that. You think you're all big and bad? You think you got the cat by the tail? You think, I'm good, I'll go to heaven, I got it all worked out. Won't you, won't you humble yourself someday and just go out there and stare at the sun? And see if it ain't just a matter of time, you'll be blind. Guys, we need to humble ourselves. He said, he said creation itself tells us there's a God and we're without excuse. And then we have, this is the Lord Jesus. This is what it is to look at Jesus. And people that go, use His name in vain. Ah, Jesus. Or GD. Maybe verses like this will help you to shut your mouth. Yes or no? Y'all hear me or not? Say. Ah, you can't talk like... Come on, guys. Amen? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. First four commands. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Number two, make no idols. Number three, say it with me if you know it. Don't take God's name in. And number four, keep the Sabbath holy. Worship the Lord. Put Him first in your life. Put Him first in your week. And uh, we need to honor Him. So anyway, just a little, little intro here to the message. But I saw that sharp two-edged sword, and I, know it go, I can see it back in Revelation chapter 1. Let's go now with this church. Well, He commends this church. Now, wait a minute. There's seven churches. Only two did not receive condemnation. Out of the seven, how many did not receive condemnation? Only who? It was a church at Philadelphia, and it was a church at Smyrna. It was the loving church, and it was the suffering church. And I would say, if you want to give your life for Christ and go after something, go after loving people. 
If you want to give your life for something, when you suffer, suffer graciously. That's a beautiful time when you can have a testimony for Christ instead of the whining, instead of the cussing, instead of the complaining because God blesses that. He wants us to suffer when we do suffer. Not that we can't tell people our problems, but, you know, He wants us to... It's a beautiful time that people can then know there's a God in heaven. You hear me or not? Kevin, are you here today? Kevin and and Dana, are y'all here? Maybe the next service. And uh, Kevin, Tampa cop, He's a friend of mine. He retired about six, seven years ago. He made a deal with God. He was not a believer. He was rough. He was lost. But he made a deal with God. If you'll get me out of Tampa police alive after like 30 years or whatever, when I retire, I'll go to church. So he made that deal with God, retired, got a house in Rotunda, Drove through the parking lot one day. Chuck Bears was here, Coach Chuck. And he pulled in and he asked Coach Bears, what kind of church is this? And Coach Bears said, a good one. That's a good line, ain't it? A good one. And he said, all right. Come to find out he was from Ohio and he's from Ohio. So they sort of connected and sure enough he came. And I heard the story. And I heard the reason that he came. He made a deal with God. And he heard me preach a little bit, but that, it got in my heart. And so I went and saw him at his house, he and his wife. Just did it, just the way it was. Because I wanted him to know, these deals we make with God, sounds good, but you need to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So I was able to lead him and her to the Lord. And they, it was not hard at all. They put their faith in Christ. Why am I saying all this? Because Kevin's suffering now. That's cancer. And I don't think he would mind me telling you. He's my friend. And it's terminal. And they've told him they've done all they can do now. Well, why am I bringing it up? This wasn't part of the message, by the way, but he's suffering. But he's suffering in such a way that he's a light and a testimony for the Lord. This Tampa cop is crazy. Yeah, yeah, praise the Lord. He is. He's suffering graciously. It's hard. Now, he's a man. (laughs) He he, No doubt about it. But I'm just saying, when you suffer, you can suffer graciously. And I I had lunch with he and her on Friday. You know what he told me after we had lunch? It was about an hour and a half. And he said, said, you know, for the last hour or so, I forgot I had cancer. We just talked and we loved on one another. But what a blessing he is to me. And many of you are suffering, I'm sure. But that suffering church we studied last week, that was a great message and it's great for our heart. Amen? And I know I'm wasting time, sort of, but let's go. Come on. It ain't a waste of time. Church at Pergamos. Jesus says, I know your works. He commends them. I know where you live, man. I know where you live. Where Satan's seed is. Wow! That's quite a place to live. What is that? And you hold fast my name. You've not denied my faith. Even in those days, and he mentions this guy, and there's nothing written about him anywhere in the Bible. Antipas, other than here, where Antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you where Satan dwells. Did you know maybe other people don't know your name, but God knows your name? Maybe your name don't appear anywhere else, but Jesus knows your name. And this guy doesn't appear anywhere else, but Jesus knew his name. Isn't that crazy? Come on, man. So he says, I know your works and I know where you live. This is Jesus speaking. And it's a satanic place. This was the capital of Asia at the time. And it was a a place of incredible idol worship. They actually worshipped snakes. I don't like snakes. One thing I ain't doing is worse than one of them. You understand right now? But anyway... Yeah, and it was, you can imagine, and over in Asia, you can still see remnants of that. Snake worship, uh, dragon worship, things like that. This was where this was. And Jesus knew it wasn't easy to be there, to have a church, and, and they were being persecuted as well, like the church at Smyrna, as we can see. So, but he says, you know what? Even though you live there, and even though it's a tough place to be, you've held on to my name. You've held on to my name. 
and you've not denied the faith. So he commends this church. Yes or no? Yes or no? All right? Even when they killed faithful servants like Antipas, and he's just one that was mentioned. I'm sure there were many, many, many under the Roman rule and Jewish uh, oppression as well and persecution. Many were being slaughtered. But the title of the message today is, is weird. It's weird. Okay. They kept my name. They didn't deny the faith. It was a horrible place to live as far as a Christian's faith because of the pressure and persecution. Why the title then? The compromised church. Isn't that what we're supposed to do? Keep his name? Aren't we supposed to keep the faith? Yes? Say. Well, the bottom line is that's expected of you. Y'all hear me or not? He died on the cross. He rose from the dead. You've been saved. You're to keep the faith. You're not to deny His name. And there is a place prepared for you and there will be a reward for you. But that, and, and even though you've got a hard situation you're going through, and many people do this, they go through hard times and instead of it being a testimony, it's the very thing that kills their testimony because they're weak and they don't... They, they don't bear up under pressure well. And they struggle. Instead of serving the Lord, they turn on the Lord. You hear me or not? This is life down here. Life is hard. And in America, it ain't as hard as most places on this planet. But life is hard. How many had some hard times? Can I see some hard time hands? Some hard times? Some, okay. But just because you're making it through those hard times doesn't give you a pass to do the wrong thing. Do y'all hear me or not? Say I was married 28 years and hurt real bad. Y'all know my story. And some of the counsel I got after being, you know, left for somebody else, some of the counsel I got from some people I knew and even some friends was that I just need to go out and sleep around. That'll fix you. And here's the funny thing. That's what I wanted to do. But just because hard times came into my life did not give me a pass. Did y'all hear me or not? And so this is a great church, and they're, they're doing great things. But they're the compromised church, and why? Let's go, Raj. Why? What's the word compromise mean? Now, in Washington, D.C., it's a, it's a popular word. Compromise. I don't see much going on up there, though. I see shoving down your throat whether you like it or not. Okay? It's my strong opinion. However, what's the word mean? It's a weird definition. Not fully satisfactory agreement. When you compromise, you're not fully satisfied with the agreement you made because you had to compromise and didn't get everything you wanted. You know who ain't compromising? Take a wild guess who ain't compromising. Jesus Christ. You understand? Yeah, well, it don't mean that. It ain't male and female anymore. Yes, it still is. Marriage is not between a man and a woman. Yes, it still is. Do you understand or not? Yeah, but, you know, I should have the right to terminate a pregnancy. Not according to Jesus Christ. I mean, I'm just saying, well, that ain't nice. It's not nice because the church has compromised. Have y'all heard? Are y'all listening or not? I've done made you mad. Well, I'm his spokesperson, not yours. Now, I love speaking for you and loving you, but we've got to not compromise. Now, those are just some easy ones I mentioned. I could go all day on this stuff. All right, let's keep looking. So, it's not fully satisfactory agreement. Compromise. Somebody who is compromised. It means they have a damaged what? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How about this one? Compromise. The definition, not completely what? I mean, it's a beautiful bridge. It's great. But I heard it's got all kinds of cracks in it. And as you're driving your 18-wheeler across it, you might go, Oh, man, I hope I make it to the other side. Because it's not completely what? Sound and structure. Okay? So the word compromise. Well, what did it do in this church? Let's look at it. Let's look at it. Here we go. He says, I have a few things against you. 
because there are them that hold the doctrine of Balaam. Most people are going to go, what? Who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed to idols, and to commit fornication. So I have this against you. So what is the doctrine of Balaam without taking all day? The doctrine of Balaam. Balaam was a false prophet in the Old Testament. Don't go to sleep here. This is important. And he taught how to trip up people and how to trick people. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, Balak was the king of Moab. He wanted the people of Israel, who he hated, to be cursed. And so he hired a preacher to curse them. But he couldn't curse them. So what he did, he tripped them up. This preacher, this prophet, was used by this wicked king to trip up Israel and to trick Israel. Y'all hear me or not? Now this is condemned. He says, I have this against you, this doctrine. Keep looking. Now Balaam was a covetous, was covetous prophet, and he could be what? Prophets, preachers today should not be able to be bought and sold. Did y'all hear me or not? Get that down in your noggin. If you're feeling funky about some joker you see on TV or a church that's asking for money or telling you magically your money can be doubled by Friday, if you get something in your gut that tells you it ain't right, you need to realize that is not right. Hear me? Second Peter says, which is forsaken the right way, they're gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosar, who loved the what? Wages. This guy, he can be bought and sold. Okay? His way was selling religious tricks. Jesus says, I condemn you, church, for having this doctrine of tripping people up, of tricking people. I condemn you for that. His doctrine was corrupting people. Y'all hearing me? I lost you this morning. It's too complicated. The church in the last days will trip people up. It will trick people. It will corrupt people. The church will? Yeah! And Jesus hates it. He's not done. He says you also have them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Which I what? When Jesus says he hates something, six things he hates in Proverbs. A proud look, number one. Okay? Okay? Feet that are swift to mischief, hands that shed innocent blood, he that sows discord among the brethren. There's a couple more. A lying tongue. Yeah. They're not that hard. They're not that complicated. (laughs) When you see he hates something, it's not that complicated. So, but what is this, the doctrine of the Nicolaitans? Jesus, I don't know what that is. Can you help me? Yeah, I can help you. Well, the word Nico means conquer. Say that. Nico or Nike means what? That's where the swoosh came from. Nike, conquer. Laton or laos means people. So the word Nicolaitan means to do what? Did you know the church shouldn't be in the business of conquering people? Jesus hates that. Y'all hear me? Let's get a little more into that. The doctrine was conquering the people, say it with me, through, help me, lording or exalting themselves above the people. I'm the pastor here at Fellowship Church. Okay, you got a job. Whatever your job has been or was or is. But I'm not above you. You're not to kiss my ring or kiss my foot. Do you hear me, yes or no? My prayers are not better than your prayers. Did you hear me? And many of you came from past churches where they teach this. There's a hierarchy. You know what the hierarchy is? Jesus. And everything else is a lowarchy. 
Y'all hear me? So power over people. We see that in Washington. But we see it in the church too. It's funny, people get elected in Washington by our votes. They go represent us and get there and they don't represent us. What's up with that? But it happens in church. Jesus says, I hate it. Plain English, plain English. This is my quote. If you don't like it, blame me. The church in the last days will be tricking and tripping people and will be lording and exalting themselves over people. This is something we need to be aware of and not do at the Fellowship Church. Do y'all hear me or not? I'm not going to trick you. My job is not to trip you up. My job is to help you walk and be able to stand and be stronger in your life. My job isn't to lord over you. My job is to love you. I am you. You're me. We're us. Got it? This is a warning. Matter of fact, it's more than a warning. These are fighting words to Jesus. It's no, exa- it's no small thing that he started out introducing himself as the one with a two-edged sword. That's how he introduced himself. Why? Because trouble was coming. He ain't done. Repent! Repent of tricking and tripping people. Making stuff up. Acting like you've got these magical powers to heal people. And they flop all over the place. Are you kidding me? If you can't do it legit and go out into a hospital and do it, don't play your games. I had somebody last week come up to me. Two people. And you're not going to do well when you do this. Okay? You know, what do you think of this guy? And put a picture of a false prophet, as far as I'm concerned, in front of my face. And I said, I don't like him at all. And they started defending him. Did you know the whole conversation, they never brought up Jesus? Who is this guy? I can care less about him. And his false teaching. And then they tried to tell me, basically, you know, ask me if I've seen a miracle before. Well, when it comes to people being blind as a bat, never being able to see, the eyeballs are gone. No, I ain't seen them have sight again. You understand or not? But I've seen so many miracles. Are you kidding me? (laughs) I've seen tons of miracles. But I think we overlook the incredible miracles that God has given to this country. When we go get health and we get health care and we get medicines and we... Is it... Could it be God's healing and doing all kinds of things and we ain't giving Him the credit and we should? Are y'all hearing me? Am I a crazy person or what? There is no room for us to make stuff up. Y'all hear me? And that's before I even looked at this passage. But the thing is, I was sort of made to feel bad because I don't do what this joker does. I ain't going to feel bad. I'm not going to feel bad. And finally, if you're here today, I'm sorry, but it's the truth. Finally, they said, one said, well, I can't talk any longer. I've got to go to the bathroom. I said, once you pray about it, you should be able to hold that for four days. I'm not trying to be ugly, but guys, this is God's Word. Repent, or I'll come quickly, and Jesus says, I'll fight against you with the sword of my mouth. Wow, that's not a lot in the Bible. You don't see that much in the Bible, this kind of language. I'll fight against you with the sword of my mouth, Jesus says, unless you quit your tricking and quit your tripping and quit your lording and exalting over people. He has in his right hand seven stars back in Revelation. Out of his mouth goes a what? This is who Jesus is. Our crap ain't going to fly. It's just not. He is Lord and we ain't. His way is right and ours is wrong. Well, you can't build a church like that talking like this, Pastor. Well, I don't give a hoot and I disagree. I think you can. The truth is what sets us free, not the tricks. 
Not saying tricks don't look like you're set free, but I think truth still sets you free. The Word of God is quick. It's powerful. It's sharper than a what? Yeah. Yeah. This two-edged sword thing is pretty important, pretty strong in the Bible. Keep going, buddy. Above all, we're to take the shield of faith. You can quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. You're to take the helmet of salvation. You're to take the what? The what? The sword of the Spirit. Jesus said, I will come against you with the, with the sword of my mouth when, when you do this as a church. Keep going, Raj. God's Word is truth, not tricking and tripping, not power over people. Don't you say that out loud with me, please? God's Word is not tricking and tripping, not power over people. Did y'all hear me or not? You know a false prophet when you meet him. If a fellow says he can heal you, it should be 100% of the time every time. Did you hear me or not? (laughs) If he has the power of God to heal you, then he's got the power of God to heal you. Okay? If they blame you because it's you or they can't do it or whatever, listen to me. That's a fraud. Okay? And here's the truth. We're all going to die, guys. The the thing you need to know more than anything else is when you die, are you going to go to heaven? Are you going to go to hell? And when you have Christ in your life... Live for Him. Honor Him. Serve Him. Even if things are hard. Don't compromise. Not His Word. Y'all hear me or not? And we as a church should never do that. Compromising God's truth will turn God's sword against you. Say that out loud. Compromising God's truth will turn God's sword against you. I'm not saying life ain't hard. But I am saying, I don't want that sword against me. If God be for me, who can be against me? If He be against me, who can be for me? I'm shot. You hear me? He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him that overcomes, I'll give to eat of the hidden man. I'll give unto him a white stone, and the stone there'll be a new name. A new name! Which no man knows, saving he that receives it. I've got more scripture. But Raj, I think we're going to quit right there, okay? The bottom line is, what is that new manna? That is fellowship with Christ. Jesus is the bread of life. He's the bread that came down from heaven. And so when you know Him, you'll have fellowship with Christ. If you do the right thing, you're going to have fellowship with me, He says. Amen? Follow Him. Serve Him. Live for Him. Say this out loud. Don't trick. Don't trip. Don't. One more time. Say it again. Don't. 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 Can we do it one more time? Don't. 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 How about we do this? How about we do this, Raj? Where is it? And thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like it. Namely this, thou shalt love your neighbor as yourself. There is none other commandment greater than these. Got it? We don't want to resort to tricking, tripping, lording. We want to stay with loving Jesus and loving people. Got it?